Hello everyone, today I will show you how to change or reduce the stiffness of a structural member according to ACI code inside ETAR software. However, before doing this, let's go to ACI code chapter 6. And as shown in this chapter, we need to reduce the moment of inertia according to this number in this table. However, before going deep into this information, let's read here. The lateral deflection of a structure under factor lateral loads can be different from that calculated using linear analysis in part because of the inelastic response of the member and the decrease in the effective stiffness. Therefore, due to inelastic behavior of the structure, there is a decrease in the effective stiffness of the members. And the reason why we need to provide an appropriate effective stiffness is to provide realistic estimate of lateral deflection and to determine deflection imposed actions on the gravity system. And as mentioned here, a simple way to estimate an equivalent nonlinear lateral deflection using linear analysis is to reduce the model to stiffness of the concrete members in the structure. Therefore, this is the reason why we need to reduce the stiffness. And you should notice that we are talking about lateral loads and we should reduce the stiffness based on this table or based on this one or based on this section. We have three choices. I will choose this one. And in this paragraph, there is a very important information. If the factor moments and shear from analysis based on the moment of inertia of a wall taken equal to 0.7, the gross moment of inertia indicate that the wall will crack in a flexure. Based on the modulus of rupture, the analysis should be repeated with I equal to 0.35. As shown in this table, the wall have two member conditions, the uncrack and a crack section. Therefore, we need to start first assuming uncrack section, and if we have obtained that the wall will crack in flexure, we should use 0.35. Okay, this is all for ACI code. I will go back to ETABS, and I will start modifying the inertia of columns from frame section, and we click here, modifiers. Of course, we need to change the inertia to 0.7. Let me show you this table again. And I will do just the same for the rest of columns. Okay, and that's all for columns. Now let's start with the walls. And as shown here, the naming have been changed to F11, F22, and other namings. We need to know the meaning of these namings before we applying any change. Okay, I will go to this Excel. I have summarized some information. I will go to this link. In ETABS, shell or area element has two types of stiffness. That means in plane stiffness refers as F11, F22, F12, and out of plane stiffness refers as these M's. Therefore, the in the plane are the F's and the out of plane are the M's. These F11 and F22 are forces per a unit of in plane length as shown here. They are similar to stresses therefore. And if we continue reading for shear wall, the flexural and axial behavior is modified by either F11 or F22 depending on the orientation of the local axis. In column and code terms, F11, F22 would be correspond to modification of EI or EA. Of course, we want to modify EI or the inertia, which is I. And the above discussion apply assuming the local axis 1 and 2 of the shear wall area object are either vertical or horizontal. This under user control. When drawing in ETAPS, the default is to have the one axis horizontal and the two axis vertical. This means that the flexural modifier for EI should be applied to F22 for wall piers and to F11 for spandrel. If you apply the modifier to both F11 and F22, it's hardly affect the results. This is what we need to know here. Let's go back to this Excel. Let me discuss this figure here. As shown, if we have this force, which is the in-plane force, this will result in an in-plane moment about this axis, and if we have an out-of-plane force, this will result in out-of-plane moment. Of course, we are designing this shear wall to resist in-plane moment mainly, 
Of course, we need also to design for resisting out of plane. However, normally we neglect the behavior of out of plane because we will have another wall that is aligned in this direction. Then ACI means here to reduce the inertia related to the in plane. I have put here some summaries. You can check it later. I will put just the screen a little bit to allow you to see what I have did here. However, let's go now to ETAPS. And before doing any change here, let's view the local axis of the walls. I will select first the walls. And the from set display option, we click here local axis. And as shown here, the global axis have the colors of red, green, and blue. Actually, we can determine the local axis based on these colors. For example, local axis 1 have the red color as the global axis number 1. Local axis 2 should have the same color, which is green, as the global axis number 2, which is the y direction. And local axis number 3 should have the blue color. Going to plan story. As shown here, the first local axis, which is the red one, is aligned in this direction, and local axis 3 is aligned in the x direction. And if we put the elevation view layout, this is the green arrow is the local axis number 2. Therefore, we need to apply the changes to F22, which is the green one as it's mentioned previously in the CSI website. As shown here when drawing in ETABS, the default is to have one axis horizontal and the two axis vertical. Of course, we have the local axis number two vertical, which is the green one. This means that the flexure modifier for EI should be applied to F22. Please note that. Therefore, we need to apply the changes to F22. Okay, let's start doing these changes. I will change to 0 0.7 and I will reduce the out of plane to 25% of the inertia. And lastly, we need to change the slab. Of course, I will just change the out of plane because due to gravity load, the behavior of slab is always out of plane. And for in plane, we actually, we don't care about the in plane because we have assigned a rich diaphragm. And as shown in this website, let's go again. They have said that the F11 is not important if rich diaphragm is assigned. Therefore, this is the end of this tutorial.